Hello guys. In this video I'll be building this Fist of War E60 tank from Model Collect. Now towards the end of World War II, Germany planned a series of standardised tanks, including the E10, the E25, the E50, the E75 and the E100, with a number indicating each tank's weight class. These were planned projects, but with the exception of one hull for the E100, none of them were ever built putting these kits in the realm of paper panzers. However, this E60 takes things a bit further. I can't find any documentation that shows that the E60 was a real planned vehicle, so I guess it's a sort of an extension of what is already a, a what-if scenario. As you can see, it's got a Tiger B or Tiger II style turret with a large chassis. I felt like building something a bit different, and I haven't really built many paper panzers before, so I thought I'd have a go at this. I picked this kit up from Telford back in November. These kits are relatively cheap, I think this was about £23 if I remember correctly, which is quite cheap for a 135th scale armour kit. And I think that is reflected in the quality of the kit, and the fact that I don't really think it's necessarily aimed at the detail oriented scale modeller. For example, if we look at the instructions, you can see we jump straight in here with the turret, and in three steps we're basically finished with that turret. We've got two steps for the upper hull. A couple of steps for the wheels, one for the tracks. Then we put everything together and our model is complete. And you can see from those steps we're not adding a huge number of parts. There's not a huge amount of detail but maybe this is a canvas to improve it, maybe it's a good opportunity just to play with some new techniques and so on, on a uh, sort of less valuable kit. I did start, as the instructions suggested, with the gun barrel. This is the breech mechanism which won't be seen once the turret is built up. One thing that did surprise me is there are no location pins on any of these parts. So there's a sort of slot there that, that guides these roughly into place, but there are no pins anywhere down the sides of this barrel. I used a few old tricks to get it lined up, including putting this um, mantlet into place here, just to squash the two parts together, and of course I clamped it at the far end while the glue was drying. The gun barrel is the same story. You can see there that I've left the sprue attachment points on there. I find it much easier to remove those when the two halves are together and I find you get a much better finish that way too. But the same situation here, no alignment pins for that barrel. And so we have to be particularly careful to get that right so we don't end up with like that a bend in the barrel once it's dried. Looking at the turret, it's a Tiger II, Tiger B style turret. You can see here, if we just try to dry fit the underside to the upper part of the turret, fit is not really one of the hallmarks of this kit. It's not a huge problem, to be honest, on this piece. But if you look at the back here, you can see that uh, opening there is not quite symmetrical. The angle on the left is different to the angle on the right. And in fact, I have to kind of squeeze it with my hand and shove the whole thing over to the left to make this back panel fit in properly. Again, maybe not a big issue, especially if you've built a few models, but then again, I do feel like this is not really aimed at, you know, experienced modelers. It's a bit of a strange one. Still on the turret, and I couldn't help notice that the attempt at the weld marks here are not particularly good. I don't know if you can see that very well there in the video, Maybe in that shot you can, but they're really just sort of a, a squiggly, worm-like line going all the way around the turret. So I very quickly decided to scrape those off and then come back later to add my own. Here I'm trying to squeeze that turret into roughly the right shape while I add that front armour piece. I 
The suspension system is a really simplistic affair. We have this single piece on each side. All of the arms are moulded into it, so there's no positioning of the wheels. So it's not a single piece, is it? Because there's a back to go on it as well. Two pieces per side. Again, no alignment pins for this. And the wheels then attach directly onto those moulded on arms. We get two sprues like this in the kit with all these road wheels on. However, these are not the road wheels that we're using. Instead, we have three sprues like this with much larger road wheels. You can see the comparison there. And it's these larger ones that the instructions call for. There are quite a few leftover of spare parts in this kit. The road wheels go in pairs with a simple spacer between them. I did find that this plastic was quite hard to glue. I used Tamiya cement, the regular stuff, not the extra thin stuff, and uh, it did seem to have a bit of an issue sticking some of these parts. About the only location pin on the kit is for these um, idler wheels, so it's quite easy to get the two halves lined up there. I did have to widen the holes here though to make the suspension arm go into place. The E60 hull is characterised by two parts, the lower bathtub style piece and the upper decking. To be fair the fit on those is quite good. But the engineering doesn't actually allow us to um, get a great join on them. So you can see here, for example, we've got this thin piece of the lower sponson with only one little tab at the back there that sticks up and joins the upper part of the sponson on the upper deck. So it's very easy to push that lower sponson in and it will just flex because there's nothing underneath it. What I did there was pack that with some strips of styrene to build it up and give the uh, lower portion something to rest on and attach to. To be fair, the rear piece did fit quite nicely without the gaps that we had on the turret. The engine deck is similarly a simple design with simply this access door that needs gluing in place. You'll notice as you put the piece in, there's nothing to stop it falling through and being uh, opened inwards. There's a dead easy solution for that. I took a strip of styrene, glued it across the inside, and then with that securely in place, the door can rest on top of it and it won't fall inwards. There the deck goes into place. We do actually have slots and tabs there to align it properly, and it looks pretty decent. I did find the fit of the turret onto the upper hull to be quite tight. And in fact, the, uh, the slots there for the tabs on the turret were slightly smaller, I think, than the, uh, the tabs themselves. So the fit's quite tight. And I had to do a bit of trimming of the tabs and a bit of enlarging of the slots to make it a bit easier for them to go in and out. To be fair, once it's painted, that's not going to be something you're really going to use much. We do get some brackets and lots of spare track pieces, so we can add those to the side of the turret. That's a nice feature, I think it breaks it up quite well. Because those brackets were quite fragile, I made the decision to simply glue the brackets and the tracks into place. And I can simply brush paint the tracks once the main tank is painted. As you can see, we've got the standard array of Panzer tools, tow cables, towing hooks, etc, etc. Very clear location slots for those and the pieces do fit in well. At this stage and after only an afternoon's building really, the tank was more or less ready. I did leave a few bits separate, so the exhausts are separate for painting. They'll slot in well enough afterwards. The turret, of course, will be painted separately too. 
and the wheels are going to stay off of painting as well because we won't be able to get behind them to paint them if they're attached. I am slightly worried about the very small attachment uh, area for those wheels, but hopefully it should be okay. Equally, the gun barrel and the mantlet are also separate. As I mentioned, I had a surprising number of spare parts left over after this. We've got fenders here, we've got a few tools, we've got King Tiger style um, side fenders, side skirts. We've got a mantlet for like a sort of um, a Yak Panther style um, tank destroyer style um, hull. We've got another two halves of a gun breech, a couple of hatches here and there, lots of bits and lots of handles left over as well actually. A few of those I was supposed to attach to the side of the turret but I didn't. And as I mentioned earlier, a complete set of road wheels. There's quite a lot of plastic left over considering that there aren't that many parts that we actually add. Anyway, at this stage I was thinking, well, the vehicle looks okay but Maybe not quite as interesting as I was hoping it would be. Um, I want it to stand out a little bit. I'm probably going to do this on a small scenic base, maybe with some soldiers running along with it um, in a kind of Battle of Berlin last ditch defence kind of uh, scenario. Since the kit was fairly cheap and I didn't have a, a massive emotional attachment to it, I thought I'd do a bit of experimentation. So I got some brass sheeting that I have and started to make, for want of a better word, some of my own photo etch. So I know that very late Panthers had air defence armour on the top of the turrets and the engine deck. I figured that the Tiger II turret would have a thick top, but maybe some of the grills on the engine deck did need protection. I simply cut a few squares of that brass sheeting. They'll go over those grills, but raised up slightly. I did consider cutting some of this sheet into the shape of the turret, but then decided against it. Some 1mm diameter brass rod was cut into short lengths, and that provided the spacing I needed for that engine deck armour. Again, it's a bit bent, it's a bit twisted, it's not the quality you're going to get from Edward, but you know, I'm just playing, I'm just having some fun here. One thing that I wasn't happy with was the appearance of the side of the vehicle. I just, I wanted some side skirts there. I tried those leftover King Tiger style side skirts, but they just didn't work. So I thought I'd cut some sections from that sheet. And then using some of this old photo etch um, fret, the sprue, whatever you want to call it, I made myself some very thin brackets to attach them. I'm not quite sure how this will turn out. Cutting them with a, a sharp pair of shears uh, does sort of bend the, um, the metal slightly, which in a way is quite useful for side skirts, but also it's uh, not great. And the metal I'm using is quite thick as well. Nevertheless, I thought I'd have a little experiment. I measured the brackets to 23 millimeters, put them over a steel ruler, and bent the final three millimeters at an angle. Then super glue was used to attach the brackets to the skirts. Because I was quite short of that thin thread for the attachment points, the brackets, I simply put one on each skirt and decided if I put them up close together, it looks like both skirts are attached to the single bracket. At least that's the plan. This is what three of them look like together, and they should attach there to the edge of our vehicle. Of course, I'll leave them separate for painting. That's quite a weak construction, so again, I cheated and got a bit more metal and just super glued it behind them to hold them nice and straight and together. And that bracing will be invisible. Finally, air defense was quite an issue for German vehicles late in the war because the Allies had air superiority. So I took this MG34 from this Tamiya infantry weapons pack 
took one of the tripod legs and modified it slightly, basically cutting it down to length. And then I used this very convenient uh, attachment point on the top of the uh, turret there. I'm guessing that's for an aerial or something to mount the MG. I also wanted to try a new technique which I saw on a YouTube channel recently and I've forgotten where, but it was basically using uh, latex gloves, which we often have around for modeling, as tarps. So I roughly cut out a section with some scissors and then tied it up with my um, scalpel. And the properties of the latex do tend to lend themselves to that kind of nice tarp effect. They scrunch up quite nicely. The PVA glue means that you can get things roughly in position and then sort of just adjust them and uh, squidge them up and get the wrinkles in and so on before it dries. And personally I was really pleased with the way that this worked. One thing I didn't do is check whether the primer I'm going to use will um, cause damage to that latex, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. I did also raid the spare parts box for some figures. These are some Volkstorm figures, I think from Mini Art possibly. These are some Tamiya figures in late war uniform. And then I think this is possibly an Academy figure or maybe another Tamiya figure. I think this is a great opportunity to use up some of these spare figures because with this last ditch approach that we're going for, it doesn't really matter that we've got some in civvies, some in one style uniform, some in a different style uniform. It's kind of a last stand mentality. I've got a couple of uh, tank commanders here and I think the one on the left is probably the best. The one on the right there looks a bit too passive for what I have in mind. We've also got this Tamiya figure here labeled throwing grenade, which I might build up. And this is one of my panther crew, I think, who's supposed to be holding some binoculars. I may or may not build him up. Anyway, there we go, guys. That was my build of the Fist of War E60 Paper Panzer from Model Collect. In the end, I really enjoyed building this. I know that compared to a lot of modelers, the modifications that I made were not particularly difficult or sophisticated. But I did really enjoy the uh, freedom and the creativity that building this paper panzer gave me. I'm definitely going to have this posed in some kind of um, destroyed Berlin kind of scenario. At the moment, I'm really visualizing quite a, a sort of a vertical um, scene, maybe this climbing up quite a steep slope or something. Um, partly because I don't have a lot of uh, horizontal space on my shelves and partly because I think that would look quite dramatic. I'm just trying to think of a, a fairly realistic way of doing that, maybe going over like a big pile of rubble or something like that with some soldiers running alongside it. So I suppose what's left is for me to decide upon a colour scheme. I don't want to go just with the standard three colour German camouflage, but equally I don't want to go with sort of the overall primer red or something because tanks weren't really released uh, from the factories in those in that condition. Then again though, we are doing a paper panzer of course, so maybe realism is already out the window. I do quite like the straight edged um, sort of splinter camouflage schemes. And I also like the look of the very light late war Dunkelgelb yellow paint. So I might do some stripes of that, perhaps over some over the primer red, maybe with a little bit of green in there as well. I'm not quite sure yet. At the moment I'm thinking maybe something like my Ram Tiger, which I did a while ago, but with a lot less yellow and a lot more primer red showing up. As always, if you've got any ideas about that, then do feel free to leave a comment below. Anyway, we'll see how that goes in a future video. Until then, I would like to say thank you to all of you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Extra special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. And until next time, have fun modelling.